going to make something called an agamograph. It is inspired by Israeli artist Yaakov Agam, and he loves to create artwork that is kind of kinetic, meaning that it either moves or that you move as the viewer to see the art in different angles. So there's a simple way that you can make a um, piece of artwork kind of three-dimensional, meaning that you'd make two pieces of artwork and then put them onto paper so that as you look around the art, you can see two different pictures that kind of form. So I'm gonna show you a sneaky, quick way to make an agamograph. For this project, you'll need things like coloring tools, crayons, markers, whatever you'd like to use to color with, two of the same size piece of paper, and I'll show you how we're going to cut those to prepare them, hopefully a ruler, because that will be easier to measure when we need to cut things apart, scissors, markers, some other stuff just to color with. So I have a lot to tell you about for the agamograph, but of course, first we're going to start with our mantra. So get yourself strong and ready, together, here we go. My mantra, I am positive, I am creative, I am mindful, I am amazing, I am an artist. Okay, artist, get your supplies and we'll be ready to make our agamographs very soon. So the first thing you need to do when you prepare your paper for an agamograph is to separate one of your papers for the background which we'll use to make an accordion fold and your other paper is going to be your two creations. So I'm going to fold this in half like this so that it is evenly right down the middle and then cut or tear this down the middle so that you can have two of the same size pieces of paper and we're going to make our agamograph vertical, meaning it is the tall one today. So, so I'm going to make two separate compositions or two separate drawings, one on this paper and one on this paper. Now I'm just going to pick two subject matters, like I'll probably do Fuzz Aldrin, which is our orange cat, and then Marvin, the black kitty, over here, just because I think cats are a great subject matter. Um, but you can pick something else that maybe will show some transition between changing. So for example, maybe you're going to do an animal and it's going to turn into something else. So I have some other examples where I've got like a panda and then a human on this side. So as the um, movement happens, it kind of looks like the object is turning into something else. So you can do a before and after, you could do maybe a messy clean version or a positive negative. There's lots of different ways to do this, but I'm just gonna do two different compositions. So when you create your drawing, simply start with pencil or Sharpie, draw both drawings and then color. So there's not really a lot of rules about what needs to happen on your compositions, except for they both need to be facing the same way vertically like this and they need to be nice and bold. I would also suggest making the colors very different from each other. So on this warm side with Fuzz and his orange fur, we're gonna do more warm colors. And on this cool side with Marvin and his nice cold black kitty cat fur, we're gonna do more cool colors. That way the transition between the two as you look from side to side is going to be very obvious. So I'm gonna start sketching, outline, and color my two compositions. coloring my two compositions, I need to measure out how I'm going to cut my strip. So this part is always a little bit sad and nerve wracking because you have to cut your creations apart. So if you want to take a picture before you do that, you totally can. But this is how we get that really cool kind of changing effect from both pictures. Now to do that, we're going to make our strips one inch. So I'm using a, let's see, nine by 12 sheet of paper, meaning that this um, length across is six inches and then this is nine. But I only need to know that really just because the base has to fit those two sheets of paper. So I'm gonna move these to the side for a second and I'm going to measure out one inch all the way across my paper. So again, this is 12 inches, so I'm gonna put that edge right here and just do a little mark or a dash at each inch line. Now, if you don't have a ruler and you want to estimate a little bit, you totally can, but that just means that your strips when you glue them on might be a little bit off, and that's okay. That's just kind of practicing our ability to problem solve. So I went above, just moved down a little bit further, and now I have two dashes. So now I can go across, line up in my ruler so that I see one dash and the second dash, and then go down with my line. This will help me to know how to 
fold my paper. So my base paper that I'm measuring right now is going to end up being an accordion fold shape so that on one side I can glue one composition and then on the other side I can glue the other composition. But before I glue that on, I obviously need to turn my compositions into strips. So because we have our paper with one inch widths, that means I also need to cut, we're gonna set this to the side for a second, I also need to cut this paper into one inch strips. So if you just do them in a stack, that's gonna be best because you can actually see them um, kind of take shape like a puzzle. So I'm gonna flip this over and again, measure out six inches this time since it's half as big. One, two, three, whoops, four. Five, just scooch down a little bit further. One, two, three, four, five. And of course, six is that edge right there. I'm gonna line up my ruler again, make sure that it is parallel with the edge of the paper, and then mark those parallel lines. So I should have six of these on both my first composition of fuzz in this case and my second composition. Now, sometimes we can mark these and just write like, okay, this is fuzz for F, one, two, three, four, just so that we don't get confused when you're trying to put them back in order. But honestly, you'll probably get it because it's not that many pieces to keep track of. And it's kind of like making a puzzle anyways. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here for Marvin's artwork. Six across and mark those. Scooch it down a little bit and mark again. And then have six perpendicular lines on the back. This one I'm not going to label and see if I can put it together like a puzzle so you guys can see that it's probably going to be pretty easy to do if I just keep track of where those edges are. Now again, I'm going to hand cut everything and fold and kind of prepare everything first. So we're going to set this to the side and let me show you how you're going to fold your paper. Again, it's basically going to be an accordion fold. Remember, an accordion fold goes up and down and up and down and has this kind of zigzag approach. So I'm going to go ahead and fold on this first line, trying to make it as crispy of a line as I can. Sometimes if you use um, like a pencil or something to kind of flatten and really make sure these has, have nice crispy edges, you can get your accordion fold to be really awesome. So I'm going to keep going down the line. So this line right here is my next one. I'm going to come back the other way, fold again, and keep folding. Okay, so I'm going to fold that one in a second. And the other thing that you'll need to do is simply just cut on the strips. So finish doing your accordion fold and then cut on the strips so that both of your compositions are cut into six equal strips. All right, my friends, now it is time to assemble. So you'll notice on your accordion fold that you have six sides that are kind of coming up the valley and then six sides that are coming down. So basically I'm going to take my cut apart pieces of fuzz here and lay them all on the side so that they make a picture. So I'm gonna go from left to right here, lay them in the valleys just to make sure that I have them all in order like this. And they all need to be on the same side of the accordion fold. So that's the left side here looking in. Then I'm going to take the other side and glue in Marvin's. Oops, it would go this way, right? See how it's starting to make his little face? So then I would do that on the right side. Now I'm gonna use a glue stick just because it's a little less um, messy and drippy, but if you have just regular glue, you can do that too and maybe smooth it out with your finger so it's not quite so wet and slick and then just smooth down um, those pieces. So I'm gonna get all of the ones on the left complete and then all of the ones on the right complete and I'm just about done with my agamograph. Okay, my friends, check it out. Moving to the side, you see fuzz over here. Moving to the other side, you see Marvin, and of course, from the middle, you kind of see them both. That is your completed agamograph. As you can tell, creating an agamograph is a really awesome way to do such a cool trick. I just love it back and forth between Fuzz and Marvin, and that's why it's so important to have two contrasting backgrounds, because then you can really see when it changes from one to the other. Now, if you want to display it like this flat on the wall, and then as friends pass by it, they can see the transition from one to the other. It's a really cool optical illusion. So, my friends, I hope you enjoyed making that agamograph in whatever style and composition you decided to do. We are, of course, going to end with a little bit of 
mindful meditation and for this one we're just going to practice taking in the biggest deep breath we can possible and then releasing it slowly so put one hand right on your chest one hand on your belly and let's take in that very deep breath and release as slowly as possible here we go takes a lot of concentration and a lot of focus to make sure you're not letting your air out too fast. Now, I hope you feel refreshed and ready for the rest of the day. Remember, you are amazing. You are strong. You are resilient. And I love you. We'll see you next time.